Hi there. Let's deal with a new topic today and look at volcanoes. By the time I'm done, hopefully you know the different types of volcanoes and be able to recognize what type it is. You'll know how we monitor volcanoes and you'll know how and where volcanoes form around the world. So what is a volcano? Well, a volcano is a vent, or sometimes called a chimney, that connects molten rock, which we call magma, when it's underground, within the Earth's crust to the surface. The volcano includes the surrounding cone of the erupted material. So here are, here's our terminology. Molten earth, which is part of the mantle down below, is called magma, and this is a magma chamber. Sometimes cracks occur in the crust to allow the magma to get closer to the surface. We call these conduits. And then the point that it hits the top or surface of the earth is called the vent. Volcanic eruptions can come in two forms. They can be really explosive and often in a certain way dangerous, and some are non-explosive, but still dangerous. And then lava, don't forget, is basically molten earth that reaches the surface. What erupts from a volcano? Well, of course, lava, but other things come out too. So pyroclastic material is super dangerous and may erupt from a volcano and cause often lots of deaths. So pyroclastic material is rock fragments created mostly by explosive eruptions. Magma explodes, solidifies in the air, existing rock is shattered, and these are really powerful eruptions. You can see they can be almost become bombs, but sometimes ash and even more broken down ash. Lipoli, lipoli, lapoli. So here's what lots of explosive eruptions look like, and there are three products. So ash, of course, pyroclastic flow, which we looked at, and then uh, we also have a second kind of eruption, which is not violent and explosive, and it's called effusive. Effusive or lava eruptions are characterized by just the outpouring of lava. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still quite dangerous. How do we know whether a volcano is going to erupt or not? Well, we have several mechanisms. Volcanologists have several mechanisms. These are scientists that study volcanoes. One is they record the seismic activity. They check to see whether the existing cone has any deformations, so they monitor the ground around the vent, because if it starts to bulge or deform, then there is a greater probability. And they also monitor the gas. Okay, these are probably the most important. Seismic activity probably is the best predictor of whether a volcano is going to erupt or not. Now, this, as much as we have these systems in place, it's still not an exact science. In other words, still to this date, volcanoes can erupt without warning, and that's why it becomes really dangerous for people to be near or around a volcano. But earthquake activity usually then happens before an eruption. So why is this the result of magma pushing upwards, an increase in the volume of the material in the volcano, and this usually causes an earthquake to occur? What causes volcanic eruptions? Well, we'll study mountains, and when we study mountains, we know that the Earth is made up of tectonic plates, and these tectonic plates move along the surface of the earth 
and the movement can start to cause pressure building up and so on. There are three types of volcanoes we need to be aware of. One is called a shield cone, and a shield cone mostly gives off lava and is usually associated with more gentle eruptions. The lava oozes out, comes down, and creates a gentle, so a not very steep slope. So shield cones are easy to identify because they are very gently sloped because lava is usually what comes out of them, creating this gentle slope. Cinder cones are usually characteristic of pyroclastic flow. They're much more violent and usually it's ash that builds up, making the volcano steep. So here here is an example of a cinder cone and a stratovolcano, sometimes called a composite cone. So that's another name for it. A composite cone is a combination of both. So sometimes cinder comes out and sometimes lava. And you can see in this picture the different layers. Okay. Here it is again. Here's a shield cone or a shield volcano. Nice gentle slope. Here's a cinder cone, much steeper because of the ash. And there's a composite cone. Where do volcanoes usually form? Well, at the boundary between tectonic plates. So the Ring of Fire, for example, is a hotbed if we mapped all the volcanoes. And so these are the boundaries between tectonic plates. And so why do they happen at the boundaries of plates? Plates are shifting and colliding. And what's that doing? That's causing pressure underneath, causing magma to come to the surface. So let's look at this more co closely. Here's the oceanic crust here. Here's the ocean. Here's the formation of uh, the mantle into magma, which can, if given a release or a crack, can come to the surface. The Hawaiian Islands, though, are not at the boundary between tectonic plates, the Hawaiian Islands. And so there are some examples of when there simply is weak points along the middle of a tectonic plate which allow these mantle plumes to come to the surface and push, push, push up, creating active volcanoes. So here's the ring of fire again. The ring of fire is mostly as a consequence of the shifting of tectonic plates, creating pressure and allowing lava to come to the surface. Let's look at a video clip on volcanoes. Dear Tim and Moby, can you tell me about volcanoes from Dialan? Volcanoes are found all over the world, especially along Earth's plate boundaries. They happen when pressure builds up inside the Earth, causing hot molten rock from Earth's mantle to push through the surface. Volcanoes are so powerful that large eruptions can even affect the climate on a global scale. When Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991, so much ash was thrown up into the atmosphere that the clouds blocked out the sun's rays and lowered the global temperature by 1 degree Celsius for several months. There are all different types of volcanoes. The simplest is a cinder cone, formed when ashes and cinders are blown out of a single vent, quickly forming a small cone-shaped mountain. Similar to the cinder cone is the composite, or stratovolcano. Stratos form at convergent plate boundaries where one plate is pushed under or subducted under the other. 
The subducted plate melts into magma, which is forced up to the surface through multiple cracks or vents in the crust. The lava from a stratovolcano is very thick and slow-moving. The viscous lava hardens inside the vent, and pockets of gas get trapped inside. When the pressure gets strong enough, the trapped gas causes an explosive eruption, causing mudslides and clouds of molten ash called pyroclastic flows. Lava and ash pour out of the crater and solidify to form a steep-sided cone that gets bigger and steeper after each eruption. Mount St. Helens in Washington State was a stratovolcano that blew itself up. It's part of the Ring of Fire, a giant chain of stratovolcanoes circling the Pacific Ocean. A shield volcano is a lot less explosive than the strato. Shield volcanoes often form underwater at divergent plate boundaries like the mid-ocean ridge. The runny lava that comes from a shield volcano is primarily a mineral called basalt. Shield volcanoes can also form over hot spots, areas of great heat and activity in the Earth's mantle. A hot spot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean led to the formation of the Hawaiian Islands. This hot spot is still active today, and Hawaii contains two of the world's most active shield volcanoes, Kilauea and Mauna Loa. In volcano complexes, there's a whole lot of volcanic activity, but it isn't as concentrated. Fumaroles, geysers, mud pools, and hot springs are all formed when water seeps through the ground and gets heated up by volcanic rocks. Dried lava forms igneous rocks like pumice and basalt. Don't worry, Moby. This volcano is dormant. That means it hasn't erupted for a long time. Of course, you never know with volcanoes. I might have...